Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will configure Ether Channel. Ether Channel is used to aggregate switch interfaces to operate as a single logical interface. What is the advantage of that? Well, in the previous couple labs, we looked at spanning tree protocol. As you can tell by the port lights in Packet Tracer, only one link is active between each switch. We have four fast ethernet links connecting switch one and switch two, for example, but only one link is actually forwarding information. Those other links still provide redundancy in case the F01 interface fails, for example, but it would be better if we could make use of them. Let's get started. The first part is to analyze this topology from a spanning tree perspective. Now, you can tell all of this by looking at the port lights in Packet Tracer, but let's use some show commands to confirm. Which switch is the root bridge? Well, all of switch 1's port lights are on, so there's our answer. Let's go on switch 1 to confirm. Enable. Show spanning tree. Okay, this bridge is the root. So, all of the interfaces here are designated, they're forwarding. Now, how do these other switches choose their root ports? Whichever path they select, the root cost is the same, and the neighboring switch's bridge ID is the same. So, the next, career, uh, the next criteria, and this is very important, is the neighbor's port ID. The port ID consists of a port priority, which is 128 by default, and the port number. The lowest port ID wins and is selected as the root port. Keep in mind, this is the neighbor's port ID, not the local switch's port ID. That is why in this topology, between switch 1 and switch 2, and between switch 3 and switch 4, I connected F01 to F04, F02 to F03, etc instead of F01 to F01, F02 to F02, to demonstrate this. From switch 2's perspective, switch 1's F01 has the lowest port ID, so it chooses its interface connected to switch 1's F01 interface, which is its own F04 interface as the root port. The same goes for switch 4, which also selected its F04 interface. Switch 3 chose its G01 interface, which is connected to Switch 2's G01 interface, also because Switch 2's G01 interface has a lower port ID than Switch 2's G02 interface. So, the interfaces across from the root ports are designated. Now, on the remaining links, how do the switches choose which side would block and which side would designate their ports? That is the root cost. Switch 2 is closer to switch 1 than switch 3, so its side of the link is designated, and switch 3's side is non-designated, blocking. And switch 3 is closer to switch 1 than switch 4 is, so switch 3's side is designated, and switch 4's side is non-designated, or blocking. Okay, so that was just another review of spanning tree's election process. It also shows the reason we use ether channel. We want to take advantage of these redundant links and have them all available for use, rather than waiting for the active link to fail. So, our first task is to configure a layer 2 ether channel between switch 1 and switch 2 using a Cisco proprietary protocol. That protocol is Port Aggregation Protocol, PAGP. Let's go on switch 1 and configure it. Conf T interface range F01 to 4. Before I enter the commands, I should mention some requirements of Ether channel, regardless of whether you're using PAGP or another method. All ports involved must have the same configuration. That is the same duplex, full or half, the same speed, the same native and allowed VLANs, and the same switch port mode, access or trunk. Both of these switches have the same configuration by default, so that won't be a problem here, but keep that in mind for the next troubleshooting lab. So, regardless of the Ether channel protocol, the command begins the same. 
channel hyphen group, followed by the group number. This is necessary in case you have multiple ether channels on the same switch. Note that this number doesn't have to match the switch on the other end of the ether channel. Let's go with one, then mode. And this is where we determine the protocol used. PAGP has two options, desirable or auto. Much like DTP, dynamic trunking protocol, a desirable will actively form an ether channel if the switch on the other end is using desirable or auto mode. Auto, however, will only form an ether channel if the other end is desirable. Let's go with desirable. Okay, that's it. Do show ether channel summary. There is PO1, port channel one, our new logical interface. Notice the SD next to it. S indicates a layer two ether channel and D means it is down. That's because we haven't configured switch two yet. Here are the ports included in it, F01 to F04. And let's configure it as a trunk as per the instructions. Interface port channel one, switch port mode trunk. Okay, let's do the same configuration on switch two's end and then check if the ether channel is working. Enable, conf t, interface range F01 to four. I'm just gonna shut down these interfaces while I work on the ether channel, shut down. I'll use a different channel group number to show it will work even if it doesn't match with switch one. Channel group two mode, and this time let's go with auto, although desirable would work as well. Now let's make it a trunk. Interface PO2, that is port channel two. Note on this switch model, both the ISL and dot one Q encapsulations are supported. So we have to configure the encapsulation first before making a trunk. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk. Okay, let's activate the interfaces. Interface range F01 to four, no shut. Now let's check if the ether channel is up. Do show ether channel summary. It's probably a good idea to get familiar with the meanings of these flag codes in the output of this command. But that's just thinking in terms of possible test questions. Although in a real scenario, you can just see them right here in the output. There it is, S meaning layer two and U meaning in use. Our next task is to configure a layer three ether channel between switch two and switch three. You will use layer two ether channels more than layer three, but you should know how to make one. Let's start here on switch two. Exit. First, enable IP routing on the switch to give it layer three capabilities. IP routing. Now let's make the ether channel. Interface range G01 to two. Use the no switch port command first before making the ether channel. This will make the interface layer three. Then let's make a static ether channel. Channel group one mode on is the command for a static ether channel. Next, let's assign an IP address to the interface. Interface P01, IP address 23.0.0.1.255.255.255.0. Okay, let's configure switch three's side. Enable, conf t, IP routing, interface range G01 to two, no switch port, channel group one, mode on. Interface P01, IP address 23.0.0.2, 255.255.255.0. Do show ether channel summary. Notice that a layer three ether channel is indicated by R and again, there is the U for in use. Let's try to ping across the ether channel to switch to. Do ping 23.0.0.1. And it works. Now we have one more ether channel to configure. This time we'll use an IEEE standard protocol. That is link aggregation control protocol, LACP. Let's start here on switch three. Interface range F01 to four. Channel group two 
mode, and let's check our options. LACP's equivalent of PAGP's desirable is active, and LACP's equivalent of PAGP's auto is passive. Let's go with active. Interface PO2. Again, on this switch model, we have to configure the encapsulation, switch port trunk encapsulation.1q, switch port mode trunk. Okay, now let's configure the other end on switch 4. Enable, conf t, interface range f01 to 4. Let's shut it down for now while we work. Shut. Uh, channel group 1, mode active. Since switch 3's side is active, passive would work as well, by the way. Uh, interface PO1, switch port, mode trunk. Interface range F01 to 4, no shutdown. Okay, let's check if all's good. Do show ether channel summary. We have a layer 2 ether channel, and it is in use. So, we created three ether channels. One layer 2 ether channel using PAGP, one static layer 3 ether channel, and one layer 2 ether channel using LACP. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.